The image of King Tutankhamun's golden sarcophagus is one of the most famous from the ancient world. And while it's been a century since Howard Carter unearthed Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922, mysteries and misconceptions still surround the young pharaoh. Was Tutankhamun weak and frail, or was he a warrior king, and how did he die? Was his death caused by an accident, or was he murdered? Scholars have been studying Tutankhamun and his tomb for a hundred years now, but we're still only scratching the surface in our understanding of Egypt's so-called boy king. So let's dive into some misconceptions and mysteries about King Tutankhamun, who was king for roughly 10 years. Some scholars believe that King Tutankhamun was frail and sickly, perhaps dying of malaria, but it turns out there's evidence that points towards the possibility of him having been a warrior king, or at least a hunter. Hear me out. Before I go into the shocking evidence, let's talk about Howard Carter. He was a British archaeologist, and Carter actually started out as a young artist at the age of 17 drawing inscriptions and sculptures in Egypt. He started out learning more and more about excavation techniques that by the age of 25, he was appointed chief inspector of Upper Egypt. His discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb wasn't his first discovery, but what he's the most well known for. When Carter started excavating Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922, the tomb was packed with all of the things Tutankhamun would need for the next world, including his most prized possessions. Carter took notes as the excavation progressed, stating, Details of the room emerged slowly from the mist, strange animals, statues, and gold. Everywhere, the glint of gold. In the tomb's antechamber, several wooden chests were discovered. Now, they held mostly clothes, which are rarely preserved as the fabrics tend to degrade over time. But the most interesting discovery was what was on the outside of these chests. On the sides of these chests, beautifully painted scenes covered the wood. The two longer sides depicted scenes that show Tutankhamun as a military leader defeating his enemies. These could be considered as a sort of campaign poster at the time. According to Egyptologist Bob Breyer, when Dr. Douglas Derry examined Tutankhamun at Howard Carter's request in 1925, he did something he wasn't supposed to. Well, he actually did a lot that he wasn't supposed to. Now, Dr. Derry was an anatomist by training, not an archeologist. As a result, Derry looked at the mummy through, let's just say, a different perspective, more focused on dissection rather than preservation. Carter was unaware of the vast stores of knowledge that a mummy could contain, so Derry was pretty much left to his own devices. On November 11, 1925, Derry's team began unwrapping the mummy. The examination took nearly a week, and part of the problem was just removing Tutankhamun from his gold coffin. The torso was stuck to the bottom of the coffin. Derry's team used chisels, heated knives, before eventually cutting the mummy in half to remove it. Later, Derry examined Tutankhamun's molars, but Tutankhamun's mouth was closed when they discovered him, so how did he manage that? Well, Derry carefully cut the skin around the lower jaw, then he pulled the flap aside so he could look inside the mummy's mouth. He was able to see three partially erupted wisdom teeth, which helped them place Tutankhamun's age at around 18 or 19 years old at the time of his death, and later x-rays confirmed his age of death to be 19. So Tutankhamun was a young man, not a boy when he died, and certainly not an old man. A young man that had four military chariots, armor, and hunting bows in his tomb. Further evidence that points to Tutankhamun being a warrior is the damaged leather armor Carter found. The armor would have covered the king's chest and back like a sleeveless tunic. It was originally made of about 4,000 small shield-shaped pieces of rawhide overlapping one another like fish scales. Now only a quarter of this armor remains. Reflectance transformation imaging was done on the armor, and it showed that the edges of the rawhide armor had been worn down. The implication being that it had been worn and worn often. The next piece of evidence pointing to him being a warrior or hunter, and 
likely not frail, are the set of bows and hundreds of arrows found in his tomb. In ancient Egypt, bows were one of the weapons of choice. Several composite bows were found in the tomb, and these were basically a luxury item for the royals and nobles, compared to simple bows which are made from a single piece of wood. Composite bows could shoot an arrow over 200 meters or 656 feet. One bow that was found was called the Bow of Honor, and it was decorated in gold and most likely never used. Four of the bows bore Tutankhamun's original name given to him at birth, Tutankhaten. It's highly likely that the bows were given to him when he was a child for hunting, because he wasn't old enough for battle. Then another discovery was made that pointed to him being a hunter. A fan, or sunshade as many call it, was made out of wood. Oftentimes, these fans were made for royals and were gilded with gold and connected to long poles. The fan found in his tomb shows a very specific event of Tutankhamun's life. Scenes of him hunting ostriches were on one side, and on the other, him returning home with feathers titled While at Hunting in the Desert East of Heliopolis. Scholars believe this implies that this was a scene of an actual event that had taken place. Some believe that if he hunted, it's feasible that he may have participated in a battle at some point in his life too. Tutankhamun may have been as healthy as other young men in ancient Egypt before he died. At least that's what these scenes depict. The last piece of evidence I'll share that points to Tutankhamun being a warrior, or at least not frail, is his mortuary temple. During the New Kingdom, every pharaoh built a mortuary temple where priests would make offerings for the souls of the deceased kings. These temples were built on the west bank of the Nile. Reconstruction of Tutankhamun's mortuary temple shows scenes of his life and that includes two depictions of battles painted on the walls. One of them shows Tutankhamun and some soldiers in chariots attacking a Syrian fort. The pictures also showed soldiers with skewered hands and a Syrian prisoner. The other scene shows Tutankhamun defeating an army of Nubians, Egypt's enemy to the south. Typically, when battle scenes were recorded, a date was included, but portions of the pictures were missing. The dates of these scenes aren't clear because parts of the battle scenes are chipped, so they unfortunately haven't been dated. It certainly seems there's a good deal of evidence that suggests that Tutankhamun was a healthier and more robust individual than some may have imagined. In 2005, the Egyptian Mummy Project scanned Tutankhamun and found Nothing abnormal about his lower extremities, but in 2009, they re-examined the scans and that's when they stated that he had a club foot deformity. Yet, when Tutankhamun was examined for the very first time by Dr. Douglas Derry, the anatomist in the 1920s, he established Tutankhamun to be 5'6 and on the thinner side. Derry didn't notice anything unusual with Tutankhamun's feet when he started the examination process, although Tutankhamun was in rough shape when they first discovered him. Derry even took off Tutankhamun's gold toe covers along with his gold funerary sandals and took a closer look at the king's feet. Nothing abnormal was noted. Fast forward to 1968 when R.G. Harrison, a professor of anatomy at the University of Liverpool, asked permission to x-ray Tutankhamun. He never mentioned there being any deformity in Tutankhamun's foot. Harrison was supposed to publish a detailed analysis of the x-rays, but Unfortunately, he passed away before he ever got the chance. And if Tutankhamun had a clubfoot deformity, he would have most likely walked more on his ankle or on the side of his foot. So if that was the case, then bones in his legs would be asymmetrical. But when he was examined, his legs showed none of that. Perhaps his clubfoot deformity was very, very minor, which some scholars argue to be the case. Another argument against the clubfoot theory is that the sandals that were found on him and inside his tomb showed no special customization. They were perfectly symmetrical. One pair even depicted bound enemies, Nubian and Asiatic, so that he may step on his enemies wherever he went. If Tutankhamun's tomb was filled with sandals made specially for him for the next world, 
Shouldn't they have been customized for his club foot deformity? Now, one deformity we can be sure of is that Tutankhamun was born missing a bone in his foot, the middle phalanx in the second toe on his left foot. Some examiners believe that this could be a sign of Kohler's disease, an illness in which there's a bone necrosis in the foot. So did he walk with a limp then? Some have pointed to the large number of walking sticks found in Tutankhamun's tomb as evidence, but walking sticks seem to have been a symbol of authority in ancient Egypt, as many Egyptian officials were often depicted with walking sticks in tomb paintings in contexts of power. The biggest mystery of Tutankhamun is how did the king die? There are many theories floating around and we're going to look at the most popular ones. The first being that he died of malaria. The Egyptian mummy project and Zahi Hawass, who is an Egyptian archeologist and Egyptologist and former minister of state for antiquities affairs did an extraordinary job getting DNA out of Tutankhamun to study his family lineage and identifying the two unidentified mummies found elderly lady and younger lady than any other study that attempted to do so. They also speculated what his life could have been like. In speculating his life, they also questioned if he died because he was weakened by multiple bouts of malaria. Research suggests that Tuncommon had the worst kind of malaria, falciparum. This type of malaria is so severe that it can cause death in young children, but there is a hole in this theory. Malaria was definitely a life-threatening disease in children until the age of 9 in ancient Egypt, but Tutankhamun was 19 at the time of his death. It doesn't really make sense, and some scholars are skeptical of this theory altogether. Another injury that was brought to light when Tutankhamun was examined was that he had a broken femur. Doctors speculated that maybe he broke his femur during a chariot accident and subsequent infection or complications led to his eventual death. But the researchers weren't certain what caused the fracture in the first place. When Dr. Michael Gillum at Healthcare Innovation Lab at Microsoft looked at the CAT scans of Tutankhamun, they showed that he had an open fracture, and this is where the broken ends of the bones poke out of the flesh. The edges of the bones were dull. Modern physicians would classify this injury as a 33C3 fracture. The only time this type of injury is seen in individuals with normal bone density is due to a high-speed impact. Based on Gillum's study of the injury, he thinks a higher velocity impact than a cherry accident would have been needed to cause this type of break. Now, we're talking about speeds akin to a gunshot or a car accident. A chariot couldn't reach such speeds, and so what in ancient Egypt could have caused such an injury? There's a lot of debate around this issue still. However, some still contend that the injury could have been sustained from a chariot crash and that maybe the broken femur led to a bad infection, which could have led to his death, but it's difficult to arrive at a clear conclusion. This last theory is pretty controversial. Was Tutankhamun actually murdered? A frantic letter written by Tutankhamun's wife and half-sister, Anka Moon, sent to the Hittite king looks more than a little suspicious. The letter stated, My husband died, a son I have not. But to thee they say thy sons are many. If thou would give me one son of thine, he would become my husband. Never shall I pick out a servant of mine and make him my husband. I am afraid. She seemed panicked, thinking that she was going to be coerced into marrying a servant, but why? Why was she afraid? Bob Breyer, a very prominent Egyptologist, has a theory that maybe Tutankhamun was murdered on the orders of his trusted prime minister, I who is also a suspect in the assassination of a Hittite prince at the border of Egypt, who was on his way to marry the witted Ankhesena Moon after she sent the letter. Briar also thinks that after I married Ankhesena Moon himself, he also had her quietly murdered because the letter's the last time she was ever heard from. When Tutankhamun's skull was examined, researchers found there was a bone fragment that was dislodged inside his skull, and the back of his skull had an unusual density to it, maybe a blow to the back of the head. But 
After further examination, this theory was put to rest. The abnormal thickening of the skull at the top and back of his head was not bone, it was resin. During the mummification process, resin is poured into the skull to cauterize the inside of the skull, and the resin hardens and then appears to be similar to bone, and the dislodged bone that was found inside his skull was also explained. It must have occurred after mummification because if this happened prior, the bone would have been stuck to the resin while it was being poured. The best explanation for it is that the bone could have been dislodged while Tutankhamun was being examined and moved around, which happened quite a bit. Tutankhamun died over 3,300 years ago, in 1323 BC, and with so much time that has passed, it's difficult to know with certainty what exactly happened to Tutankhamun. For now, this will have to remain a mystery. Tutankhamun may not have reigned for very long, but the discovery of his mummy along with his tomb was one of the most important important archaeological finds of the 20th century. His tomb was the only royal burial found intact, where it offered an extensive glimpse into the past even though we may never be sure of certain aspects of his life. The theories I've stated all have arguments for and against them. It's very difficult to arrive at an absolute conclusion. So based on the evidence, how do you think Tutankhamun died? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and share it with others so we can spread our passion for the ancient past. And I'll see you in the next one.